Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins and today I want to talk you through perfect ink blending. You may be using Distress inks, you may be using Distress Oxides or other blending inks, it doesn't matter, the techniques are still the same. Now the first thing I'm going to do is guide you through basic ink blending. So if you've never really achieved the look you want before, try the tips and techniques that I'm going to be showing you today first. Then I'm going to go into three different techniques if ink blending just the basics isn't really working for you and you're still having trouble you might want to try these other techniques for getting that ombre look without necessarily ink blending as we know it so I'm going to run you through the tools that I'm using and the materials now the first thing to say is I'm going on to watercolor cardstock this is a little bit controversial I've mentioned this in other videos before I get much much better ink blends by going on to watercolor cardstock than I do any other sort of smooth cardstock. This is not smooth, this one is cold press, it does have a very slight texture to it, um, it just adds to the beautiful texture and design of the paper and the um, ombre panel afterwards, but essentially this works, I'll explain it as I'm blending, but it just works so well with uh, particularly Distress Oxides, which is what I'm using today. Now I'm also going to be blending with uh, these large flathead brushes. A blending brush is my preference, um, whether it's large ones like this or smaller ones like this. I've got them all linked down below along with that watercolour cardstock as well and along with the inks. As I say, I'm using Distress Oxides here too. So I'm going to be working today onto a clear mat. This is quite important because as you go over the edge with your um, ink blending you're going to find that you're wasting a lot of ink if you don't have a clear surface that you can pull that ink back off of. So I'm going onto this, it also protects my mat underneath too. So as I say, let's blend a panel first of all, let's get into those basic techniques for blending inks. Um, very much this is going to be a background so don't stress too much. Um, I've chosen two colours that are really um, quite far apart so quite hard to really mix but they make a lovely purple in the middle when they do but if you are just starting it might be worth trying with two colours that are a little bit closer to each other as you practice. So picking up in circles some ink onto my brush there and I'm going to work as I say onto a mat onto watercolour cardstock and I'm going to apply ink to just over halfway up the first panel that I'm doing. This might be a background, it might be a panel that you want to then die cut a sentiment from, whatever it may be, but this is that watercolour cardstock. Now I'm going to work in small circles all the time and reapply ink onto my brush kind of every few seconds. You'll be surprised at how little ink you're actually using. And I like to go quite solid, which means going over and over the end. So the side that's gonna have the solid pink. And by working in circles, what I'm achieving here is I'm capturing every element of the grain of the paper. Every direction is getting ink applied to it. So although there is a texture to this cardstock, I'm not getting any white areas missed and no ink catching them. So now I've got my solid colour there, I'm happy with that. I'm going to keep working up. Again, always in small circles, getting the direction of the grain of the paper. And I'm going to go to about halfway, which is around about here. So solid colour halfway. And then with what's left on my brush, I'm just going to drag this up, keep going around in circles and fading that line out. As you can see, I'm doing circles and I'm doing up and down gradually until there's absolutely nothing else coming off my brush. Now that is already a really pretty background. You don't have to add a second colour here. You could leave that fading into nothing. It's absolutely stunning. Now it's really important before you go on to your second colour, if you are adding one, to clean your mat. Keep your cardstock away because these inks in particular are water reactive and even a slight mist will kind of make them react with um, your paper and ink and yeah you'll have all sorts of texture and effects in there that you might not want. Now not only have I used the spritz of water and some wet kitchen towel just to mop up the excess there, I've also turned my mat over. This means that there's no dampness at all that's going to get onto my next piece of blending. Now I tend to blend with my right hand so I always keep the blended edge 
to the right of me that does mean turning this round and it always means cleaning my mat between uses so then moving on to my next color this is uncharted mariner in the distress oxide range again again load up the brush in circles and if you want to and now i would usually be cutting this down so it wouldn't matter too much but you can actually use elements to hold this still there's a number of different things you can do to hold your paper still without actually getting fingerprints on the bit that you've just inked a common way to hold the paper still is by using a sticky note so i've just taken this off the pad and i'm going to just adhere that underneath to the underside of my panel and now i can hold this part still and not be touching the ink i tend to by habit go to the edges don't do that if you want to use your full panel but if you are going to be trimming it down afterwards it doesn't matter so going back to the blue here and i'm just going to go round in small circles and i'm going to repeat exactly what i just did on the pink panel or for the pink ink but for the blue so i'm not going to mind that there's pink here i'm going to go directly over the top of it i'm going to make sure i'm catching every edge in small circles again building up the solid color at the end here so really the first sort of third of your ink blending should be very solid in one color which that is then more ink on there and let's work up continue to work up more and it's very important as well for the best possible effect is to get or results is to get a clean blending brush if you've got old ink in your blending brushes that's really not going to help the smoothness of your blending at least at the very least take your wet paper towel at the end and wipe off all the excess if you can't go and wash your brushes so now I've gone to halfway, I'm now going to start blending out that colour. So I'm going to use what's left on the brush, working around in those small circles again, and working my way up the panel again to around about three quarters, two thirds to three quarters, as you can see there. Now this way, I've actually got more blue than pink although we've got the blend line here the blue has been brought down a little bit more and if you find that you can go back in with your pink let's just clean our mat because we're going in with a different color and i need to switch hands now i'm going to apply solid color onto the um, pink end straight i'm not going to go here because i'll end up with a big circle of pink ink i'm going to go onto the end and work this up now as you can see I'm working up quite quickly so I'm starting here in the solid color and pulling that pink up and what you'll start to see is that purple line gradually gets less and less of the blue and more and more of the pink in it always always putting your freshly inked brush down directly into the solid pink first never into the blue and what we've done there is we've just kind of evened out the amount of blue and pink a little bit and i can continue doing that until you're almost dragging the pink all the way up to here so there's some beautiful ink blending really really easy to do let's just take my post-it note off really simple to do but if you're having trouble with that and it may be that for dexterity reasons you have issues using blending brushes of whatever sort like i say they can be the ones with long handles or it could even be foam applicators if that's your preference let's have a look at some different ways that we can do this without using brushes and making it a little bit easier to get that blend line with brushes as well okay let's first go without brushes let's go with a brayer this is a very different look you're not going to get the solid color look you're going to get a lot of texture in here you're going to get a lot of the white showing through so you can apply your ink to a mat like this and pick it up or my preference is to simply go straight onto the ink pad and lift up with my brayer some of the ink now this can take a little while i'm going to get very mucky hands here but then you're just going to brayer over the top with your ink. Now again, because I'm working on textured cardstock particularly, this is going to be quite a textured look, but you're still going to get the effect 
of those colours. You tend to want to use mostly horizontal stripes across the page. Okay, so let's pick up lots of ink. And again, I'm going over the bottom much, much more. And then I'm gradually going to lift up into where the pink will be without reapplying any more ink to my surface. Okay. So very similar to how we did it with the blending brushes. Now, once again, let's clean everything up and switch over to the pink. And that includes cleaning up your brayer as well, unless, of course, you have more than one. So this time I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to pick up the pink ink and start at the base. I really like this way because not only have you already got texture in there, it's a very forgiving way of doing ink blending because there's no perfectly smooth transition that you need to worry about. So I'm going to make sure there's lots of pink at the bottom again, which I've got there now. And then I'm just going to drag this ink back and forth. Might need a little bit more until I've covered well over that halfway mark well into where the blue will be. There we go. So we've gone from blue to pink this way. And if you're not so keen on that texture that we've achieved, we can actually go in, because these are oxides and they're water reactive, we can go in with our water spray and we can now spritz this to kind of smooth out some of that texture, as you can see there. Allow that to dry and you're going to have this beautiful blend from dark blue up into bright pink. Let's let that dry and come and have a look at it in a moment. There we go, now that's dry, we have a paler version of the ombre. Beautiful colours, beautiful blend as well, and really easy to control where that blend is going. Now something that's not quite as easy to control, but definitely another way of introducing two colour blends to your backgrounds, and that's again by using the same sort of watercolour paper, but this time we're going to be smooshing. So I'm going to take my ink and I'm going to actually be applying um, you can do both colours at once or you can do one at a time. I'm going to do one at a time. As I say, both colours is absolutely possible. Now I'm going to quite put quite a bit of water onto my ink. So there was probably about four or five squirts of water on there. I'm going to put my fingers at around about the halfway mark. Again, watercolour cardstock. I'm just going to dip this one, this cardstock, into this pink ink up to around about where my fingers are lovely and then just a little bit lower down perfect now this again you're going to have a lot of texture on here perfect then I'm going to leave that on there and I'm going to do the same down the other side with the blue the blue seems to be a stronger color in this combination so I need to be aware that I usually probably need to have more pink than blue so I'm now going to do the solid colour at the end with the blue ink or the blue oxide ink. Need to come up a bit higher. And there we go. So we've then got the blue on there. Now what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my brayer and I'm going to pull together the two colours. Okay, now you could smoosh these together, but this way you do get a lot more control. So spread that out on your mat a little. Then I'm going to just take my wipe and I'm going to wipe off around the top and the bottom of my brayer while I'm here. I'm just going to put that middle strip over the centre there and again lift up a few times like so lovely starting to get that lovely blend now I might add a little bit more water just because I need a little more ink than I had on there perfect keep checking it turning it over checking it it's better to do small bits at a time than too much and I can dab 
there we go perfect look at that so this is even paler than the last one but again we've gone from the blue through to the pink with very little effort just lots of mucky fingers okay lastly we're going to use the uh, brushes again we're going to come back to these and I'm going to apply my ink to one end so I'm going to do this quite quickly because I've talked to you through the very basics at the beginning so around about just over a third of the way up there I'm going to give my mat a brief wipe I'm going to come back to my first colour or rather second colour depends which way you look at it and reapply to this end again nice solid colour and this time I'm going to introduce a third blending brush so let's just bring this colour up to here that's about right so we've got that strip through the middle that has no ink on it at the moment now I'm going to apply a little bit of Uncharted Mariner and quite a lot to the just to the side of that of the pink the reason being that we've already discovered that Uncharted Mariner is a much uh, darker deeper stronger color than the pink and I'm going to use a blending brush and I'm going to bring these two together I'm actually going to blend them together to form the middle color that we're looking for okay so there's the purple that we want and it's all loaded on my brush and I'm going to blend this into the middle now you might want to do this a couple of times because the brush does pick up an awful lot of ink especially if like me it's quite a new brush so just popping that through the center there so now we've got three strips we've got our pink we've got our purple and we've got our blue and you can pretty much blend these in just with this brush but essentially once you've laid that color down come back to your pink we'll do pink first I have got a little bit of purple on there but that's fine that's me with my mucky fingers and with what's left on the brush blend up into that purple okay now I'm going to apply a little more ink here just because I need to combat some of those bits on the side but again up into that purple directly over the top of it lovely and then I'm going to do the same just wipe this end there we go with the blue so starting with what's on the brush just filling in the gaps and going over the purple again and dragging it and that way we know we've got the perfect blend through the middle of the purple and then we've got the two colors on the other side so it may be that you want to experiment doing it that way instead before you start trying to blend the two directly together so there's another way for you do make sure your fingers are clean otherwise you will have fingerprints like this hopefully that's given you four different ways of blending and getting an ombre look with your distress inks or your distress oxides or whatever blending inks you like to use these are all different techniques, different tools as well. You'll find everything linked down below. And if you want to find out the difference between inks and oxides, check out this video just here. And as I say, links to everything are down in the description. Subscribe, everybody. If you like these videos, take care. I'll see you again very soon.